Hey, good morning everyone. Hope you're all having a great start to your week. It's me, I'm back and I'm on camera for the first time since I've had my surgery, which has been a long recovery process, absolutely, but this is me trying to get back into the swing of doing things like voice control. Anyway, what are we doing today? Well, I was browsing YouTube the other day and I came across a really interesting looking video by Andrea Epi, who is a UX designer at Apple. And she pointed us towards this website, can'tunsee.space, which is essentially a kind of, uh, it's a sort of UX test in a way. You're sort of presented with these two images and you have to click on the image that is best designed. Now, one of the things I really like about design is that on a personal level, it's very subjective because whether you prefer A or B, personally, you are correct. But from a professional standpoint, there is usually a correct answer as to what most people will find easier to use. Um, I mean, a really good example of this is I personally love serif fonts. That is like that's like my dirty secret. I really love serif fonts. My entire thesis was written in serif fonts. I would never build a product using it because a lot of people find it basically unreadable. Um, now, I've not watched Andrea's video yet. I saw her work through the first couple of examples, um, but I thought it looked like a really fun exercise, something I really wanted to try out. So we can have a go at doing this. Her video, incidentally, is gonna be linked down in the description and I'll put a card here um, so that you can see what that looks like. So with that, I think we can probably just jump into this. It's a little bit, um, what's that show? I'm sorry, I haven't a clue where the points don't really matter. This exercise is kind of one of, I'm gonna talk through my thinking as I go through these, and the ones which I get wrong are just gonna be a learning exercise for both of us, I guess. So let's just kind of give it a go. We've got the first one here, and uh, this is the tutorial section still. You can see tutorial one of three at the bottom. Uh, click the image which is correct. Clearly the left-hand image is correct. The fonts are all over the place on this one. The colors are all over the place on this one. I don't even want to hover over it in case I accidentally click it. So I'm gonna go for this one. Now this one um, I also saw in Andrea's video. So the first two examples I saw in her video, so I know the answer to this one. But the, uh, the principal difference here is the font used on the name. This font is a little bit too thin. Uh, just makes it a touch harder to read. So we're gonna go for this one. So these are 18. 18 easy ones here. Um, clearly black on blue is incorrect, so we're gonna do white on blue text. What's the difference between these two? We have a thin underline here and a thicker underline here. It feels like actually the thin underline is better. This actually looks more like an underline, whereas this one is more of a, more of a subtle separation from one to the other. There we go, yeah, separator width. So what do we have here? These kind of look uh, like they are grayed out. These look enabled, these buttons here. You know, the white on the white on the hang up button is correct, is the same shade as the white in these. So I think that's that's correct. Okay, what do we have here? We've got rounded corners versus straight corners. This is an interesting one because this is almost like a branding preference. I don't think there's a correct answer as such here. If you want to have a square search box, go ahead. I think the round search box probably looks a bit nicer, but yeah. Here we have the, uh, the size of the camera icon is just totally incorrect. Um, this one much better. Now we have a blue hang-up button. Color differences are the easiest thing to spot. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description to a channel called Hey Hollis, which has some brilliant videos about the importance of color in branding. And color is one of the easiest things to spot as being wrong. Like uh, This search bar looks grayed out, whereas this one looks more active. On the other hand, though, when you have watermark text in a field, you want the watermark text to look gray, like in a search field. You don't want it to look like you've typed the word search into the field. 
you want it to look like that text will be overwritten. So you do want it grey. What makes me think right more than left here is this is a little bit, a little bit too weak. So I'm going to go with this one. We've got uh, green and we have blue. Again, this is kind of a cultural thing as well. And a lot of, this is kind of a cultural thing and a lot of um, systems will allow you to configure these colors. There's an accessibility point there about color blindness, um, but for us, green means available or correct or go or whatever. In other cultures, that's not always the case and blue is sometimes used. However, in this case though, I think I'm gonna go with green because I think that's what the creator probably intends. Now there's an interesting one actually because we have a uh, attention. We have call to action on one hand and we have um, consistency of button design on the other. In this case, we want this to actually be a call to action. We want invite friends to be a call to action. We don't want these buttons to have the same prominence. Okay, now we're onto the mediums, so it's only going to get harder from here. Struggling to see. Oh man, this is like this is like a really hard spot the difference puzzle. Do you know what? I, I think what it is, is the two here is not aligned with the M, whereas the two is aligned with the M here. Like, it feels like the right hand one is better. Uh, because the two hours ago is kind of a subset of data underneath the Michelle Evans. Ooh, subtitle offset wrong. Okay, so uh, I mean I correctly identified what the difference was between them. Now I would have said the two hours ago being slightly offset is okay because that's data relevant to the object underneath, but hey, fair enough. I'm always checking the text for these just in case there's like an actual typo or a spelling error or something and, and that's what. Okay, so the difference here is uh, invite friends and skip, invite friends and skip. So it's interesting because skip is using sentence case here and we have block capitals in all of these other ones. I have a feeling that as this is a call to action you're going to want sentence case on the option that you are not picking, just because it makes it seem more diminutive. Ooh, very interesting, okay. Textbook says consistent button labeling. I think, I think you could debate this one, but yeah, fair enough. I think this is a question of font, or at least it's a question of uh, kerning of these letters, right? I think all of these letters are evenly spaced and these are a little bit more naturally spaced with each other. Placeholder text tracking. Interesting. I've never heard it called tracking before. I've always heard it called kerning. Okay, what have we got next? We've got a clear indication of where the buttons are. Uh, here we have no buttons. Now, this wouldn't necessarily be wrong. And there are plenty of apps that have buttons without circles on them. Yeah, like tick, TikTok, literally, the, the, the buttons, you know, the like button, the share button, and so on, don't have circles around them. The question here is one of consistency. This one has uh, a circle around the button, so they, they all should. Now, this is the first of the hard ones. This is the first of the hards. So we are, we're maybe expecting to get like, some of these. <laughs> so this is a bold font on the skip at the bottom versus a thinner font here. Mm, this is kind of interesting. I think the left hand one is correct, although the right hand one is more readable. Again, this is like that tension of the call to action because you don't really want users to click skip in a way. So I'm gonna go with the left hand one. Do you know what? 30 minutes into this. Maybe it would be easier if we if we zoomed in on this. There we go. That actually is... May, maybe I should have done that from the start. There we go. But hey, you know, in time for the final 10, right? <laughs> I'm learning a lot of new lingo. Text tracking, button padding. 
Oh, oh my god, this is it. This is the one I've been waiting for. There's a typo. <laughs> yes, always check, always check the text. Always check the text. Oof, okay, I think my eyes are starting to go funny now because like looking at this one on the left, it almost looks to me like that's not a circle. It almost looks like it's an egg shape. I don't know. Oh, are my eyes just starting to go funny though? Button shapes. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, no, right, I, I was right. Oh, I tell you what, that, that one looks so weird though. Genuinely, I thought it was just because I've been staring at my screen for the last 40 minutes. One last thing, I thought it'd be fun to see people's background affects the score. Oh, right, yeah, cool. So, um, I am a product manager. Well, and a, and a people manager. Oh, okay, I will just go with a product manager then. And I have been doing that, well, it's, it's pretty close, but yeah, no, it's, it's five years. Show my score. 7,200. And 30. Top 25% of participants though. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Do I have to hang up my chef's hat? You know, do I have to Gordon Ramsay get out of Hell's Kitchen? Hopefully not with a score like that. Um, but as I say, the scores, they don't matter at all. I had a, I had really great fun on that one actually. This ended up being way longer than I would actually put into a video. So I'm going to cut this down and I'm only going to show like a few of the more interesting examples in here or some of the examples that I have sort of interesting things to say about. I would highly recommend, you know, go and go and try this exercise out yourself. Share your scores below. Um, I actually had a really fun time doing that, weirdly. If you are, <laughs> if you're the kind of person who's really interested in the fine details, you might have some fun doing that and sharing the scores. Again, shout out to Andrea Epi for sharing this link um, on her YouTube channel. Link to that channel is below. All that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching today. I had a great time. Um, and yeah, send me more of these. This was actually really good fun. And if you enjoy this, you know, leave a like and leave a subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Chat soon.